In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the combination of the iPad Pro, the Apple Pencil, and AstroPad as a retouching tool for professional retouchers. Hey there, Michael Voloshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me at vibrantshot.com as well as via the social media links below. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at uh, using the iPad Pro along with the Apple Pencil and a piece of software called AstroPad to essentially use our iPad as a retouching tool instead of something like, let's say, a Wacom Intuos or a Wacom Cintiq. So what exactly is AstroPad? Well, effectively, it's a piece of software that runs on your iPad and on your Mac and allows you to replicate your Mac screen onto your iPad Pro and then take inputs back from your iPad Pro via the pencil or via screen clicks and essentially turn your iPad Pro into a retouching tablet like a Wacom Cintiq. So before we actually start using this product, let's talk a little bit about pricing. So this comes in two flavors. There is the basic version that they have, which is $29.99 to buy outright. And then there's the studio version, which is a more advanced version, and that's what we're using here. And that one is subscription-based, so it's $80 a year or uh, $10.99 a month. So we'll talk about some of the differences between the two versions, but a little bit of a spoiler is that um, I actually use both versions, and I kind of thought that if I'm going to use this product occasionally, then I'll buy the $29.99 one, and it will provide me enough functionality just for occasional use. And unfortunately, that turned out to be a waste of $30, because essentially the basic version is so basic that it's kind of useless. So and I'll, I'll kind of explain why that is. And uh, that ultimately is my biggest gripe with this product. Because the base version is, uh, in effect, if you're doing month to month, uh, you're buying the base version four times every year uh, versus the studio version. And the only real difference between them is the ability to customize some shortcuts. So we've got some shortcuts over here. We can customize those as well as the use of... Uh, gestures so we can use one two or three finger tapping on here in combination with the pencil to perform sort of alternative actions and so those options are not available in the base version and if you think about it like are those options really worth four times the price uh, ultimately the coding effort that went into sharing the screen and doing all the connectivity and all of that that heavy lifting uh, that's where most of the challenge lies and so implementing something like shortcuts or you know finger clicks is very minor in terms of coding effort and yet that's what makes the product useful and that's what they charge you four times more for so i think for me this would be almost a better product if they didn't offer the basic version because it wouldn't kind of piss me off as much that i have to pay that much more to actually have something that's functional so that gripe aside what is it actually like to use well it actually works quite well you can either uh, connect using wi-fi or over usb and regardless of which option you're using, you basically fire up the application on your iPad, you fire it up on your Mac, and it just kind of finds each other and it just connects. So that's really simple and seamless. There is a little bit of a sizing process that you have to undergo. So you basically have to scale up uh, your window so that it fits within the aspect of your iPad. And that takes maybe you know 30 seconds just to kind of align things. Not really a big deal, but it's just kind of an extra step you need to be aware of. Uh, lag is actually really good regardless of whether you're on uh, the USB or on Wi-Fi. Uh, the response rate is really nice when you're painting. There's a little bit of a lag on Wi-Fi, but it's really negligible and not really an issue in my opinion. Uh, in terms of color accuracy, it's not perfect, so I wouldn't really use this for any sort of critical color grading. Um, there is a little bit of a cast within the iPad, and uh, even though it's supposed to do a lot of you know sort of detection for ambient lighting conditions and adjust to that. Uh, in my opinion, it's not as good as the color calibrated monitor um, that I have attached to my uh, MacBook Pro or on the MacBook Pro itself. So again, uh, you know, I wouldn't do your final color grade on this, but it's good for those intermediate steps of uh, dodging and burning and things of that nature. So let's go ahead and actually look at some of the functionality within here. We do have some of these shortcut keys that they provide you with. And, um, you know, so you can, there's common things like option, command, shift, clicking. Uh, those are things that you use often, and so they're uh, available there for you as a shortcut without having to reach for your keyboard. That said, you can bring up a keyboard that's uh, sort of virtual here. It obviously occupies a lot of screen real estate. And so for me, I still find it much more efficient to have that separate keyboard attached, uh, either using it on your MacBook uh, Pro or 
having a separate keyboard for your iMac, it's just gonna be that much more efficient if you can use that set of keyboard shortcuts than trying to use some of these. Now there are some extra ones. If you click on this little ring, there's some application specific shortcuts that kind of come uh, built in as part of workspaces that they have in here. And you can customize those by adding a few extra ones or taking away what's in there. Obviously you're kind of limited to what's available screen real estate wise, but you can certainly modify those out uh, in the studio version only. Uh, of course, the base version does not offer any of that sort of customization. So once you're all set up and you've got things enabled, uh, everything works pretty seamlessly. We can uh, go ahead and start painting and doing anything we need to. Now, let's go ahead and actually try and use something like the healing brush, which is, you know, obviously a pretty common operation. So we can uh, zoom into an area by just kind of uh, clicking with two fingers and pinching. It works fairly well. Sometimes it goes a little past where you want to be, or sometimes it goes, you know, a little bit too um, uh, close in or too wide. And so not really a big deal, but, uh, you know, not really perfect. Uh, dragging with two fingers also kind of does the same thing. If we move around too much, it will kind of lose its place and doesn't really go where you necessarily want it to. So there's, there's a little bit of a lag within that. I find it better to hold down the space bar if you have access to the keyboard and just kind of drag around using your pencil. So now one thing you'll notice is that as I drag around my pencil, it does not show me where the cursor actually is. And that's not a limitation uh, imposed by AstroPad. It's unfortunately a limitation of the iPad and the pencil itself that it doesn't register an action until we actually click down. So to combat that, they actually have created a little bit of a hack uh, for that called uh, a hover gesture. And this is actually really important and really useful. And unfortunately, that operation has been left out of the basic version of the application, which makes the basic version of the application completely useless. I think if they at least added that one option in there, it would be semi-usable if you're okay with not customizing anything else. But the lack of that option uh, totally disqualifies the base version as a viable solution for a retoucher. So unfortunately, you've got to pay four times as much to be able to click down with three fingers and use your pencil. So how does that work? If we actually go into our background layer, now I don't recommend you going into a background layer and doing healing, but uh, we're gonna do it for the purposes of this demonstration here. I'm gonna click J to bring up our healing brush, and we can obviously do that on here. We can just click down on the icon for the healing brush. We're gonna zoom in a little bit over here, maybe reposition, and we're gonna sample a source point along the edge of the face here. So we're gonna hold down the option key to grab our source point, and we'll just align it somewhere there. Now, if I want to take that source point and without this sort of hover support, I need to kind of guess where along the face I need to click down in order for that to heal. Now, if I click down somewhere over here, you see that I kind of, I blew it, right? I, I grabbed the wrong spot because I don't have that hover preview that I normally would have. So I can two finger click to undo and that will undo that operation there. And uh, three finger click will actually do a redo for you as well. Now, if I have the option of this hover support, I can click down with three fingers and I can drag this around. So you'll see it doesn't actually do any painting. It just kind of gives me a preview of where the cursor is. So now I can go ahead and line it up, release. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and select the right layer first. So again, line it up, release, and then I can paint. And then it actually works pretty well and gets me all lined up. That's obviously something that I'm gonna use a lot when I'm doing something like hair retouching and I need to use a clone stamp tool, select a source point and a destination point along the line of the hair in order to do a heel. Obviously using this three finger click works, but it's an extra step that I now have to remember uh, when I'm doing healing of hairs. And I can, you know, for a hair focused image, it can be four or 500 times that I'm gonna be sampling and painting. So now I have to remember four or 500 extra times, I have to click down, align, and then release, and then paint. So this is a, a useful solution with the three finger click, but it's certainly not perfect because it involves an extra step that I normally would not have to do with something like uh, perhaps a Wacom Intuos or a Wacom Cintiq. I have that hover support, and so I can avoid that whole problem. Now, as you can imagine though, without having this, it's next to impossible to get this to align properly, and you'll just be undoing over and over again. So. Once again, without that option, I think the base version alone is completely useless. And even for a situation where, let's say I've got my cursor over here and I want to select my brush. So I can go into here, I change to the brush and I wanna see what size a brush I'm working with here before I actually start dodging and burning. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna grab my uh, dodge layer, let's turn on black and white. And I wanna start painting. So I'll, I'll have my, uh, 
my cursor somewhere over here and I want to adjust the brush size. Well, unfortunately, without this three finger click, what I have to do is I have to paint on here and luckily, okay, that, that happened to be a good size, but I'm immediately painting. Let's imagine that I had my brush size this big, my cursor was over here and I actually wanted to see where I'm at. So I have to sort of click down and actually affect my image by painting and then I can two finger undo and then I can maybe go in here and start decreasing my brush size. Whereas obviously with that hover support, I can just kind of three finger click, you know, paint somewhere release, and then I'll actually see my cursor in the spot where it will give me a preview of the brush size. So now if we adjust, let's see, to there, we can start painting. And that's all kind of standard. There's really no surprises as far as uh, what it does. It will just kind of paint wherever you paint. For me personally, I don't think that the input of the pencil against the uh, iPad screen is as nice as it is for something like a walk of Intuos using a little bit of a softer nib or perhaps a rough surface where you get a little bit more resistance. I find this to be a little too slick and a little bit too firm when I'm actually painting. But I think if you're you know, using uh, an Intuos right now and you've got a hard nib on it, you probably won't notice much of a difference. For me, I like to use kind of a medium uh, density nib. Uh, with a standard surface and that gives me a bit of resistance and a little bit of feedback without um, you know being too slippery or uh, too abrasive but again here you're kind of stuck with what the Apple Pencil is so not not really again the fault of AstroPad it's just kind of a gripe that I have um, but I think it's certainly something that you can get used to over time so a minor factor to consider but not really a big deal so no real surprises in terms of dodging and burning. I think for that, it's actually really nice. It works well and certainly better than using, you know, a mouse or a trackpad or anything of that nature compared to, again, a Wacom Intuos. I, I like the feel of the Intuos more. And I, I personally would get a little bit more efficiency out of the Intuos because I use it with a nice large screen, uh, like a 27 inch screen versus, you know, a small screen like this one where I only have 13 inches to work with. So that's really it for kind of those common things. Obviously, anything else you can do, you can do through here, applying filters, layers, um, adjusting things. It's all the same. You're basically just mirroring your screen. So those are kind of the, the two main things that you would really uh, struggle, I think, with is, is the dodging and burning with the feel of the pencil, or the smaller screen size, as well as the healing and the clone stamping. And sort of those are you know the limitations that we have within the iPad and within AstroPad. As far as everything else I think the product is pretty good but my biggest gripe again is the pricing because for me I simply can't recommend this as a as a retouching solution for a full-time retoucher or a photographer where you're sitting in front of the computer for 10 hours a day doing retouching because for me you know going from my Intuos to this would probably be in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 percent slower uh, than than what I'm using right now so you know I can't really justify that uh, for for something that really is just a convenience tool. Uh, for me, I would take the iPad and perhaps use it on the couch or in bed to do the occasional retouch, do a little bit of dodging and burning. But again, do I want to justify an expense of uh, $80 a year to do that? Probably not. Um, if I could buy this product outright for $120, I'd probably sooner do that than pay $80 a year for that particular convenience. So um, who is it good for? If you're a landscape photographer and you're using, you know, some of these features, you don't really do a lot of dodging and burning. You don't do a ton of, you know, lineup healing or anything like that. Then it might be okay. If you don't have uh, any sort of retouching solution right now, let's say you don't have a Cintiq or an Intuos, and you're using a mouse or a trackpad, and you happen to have an iPad Pro, and you happen to have a pencil, then certainly try out the free trial of the studio version. It's they give you seven days to give it a go and see whether you like it. Don't even bother with the basic version because again, without that hover support, in my opinion, uh, the basic version is useless for retouchers and like I said, pretty much anybody, I think. And um, see if you like it. If you do, then I think it's a good solution for that. Certainly don't go out and buy an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil in the hopes that you're gonna use this as your primary uh, retouching device because again, I think you're much better off with something like an Intuos, which you know is a fraction of the price of an iPad. Uh, along with a large monitor. I mean, basically you can get a nice large 27 inch display and an Intuos for less than the price of an iPad Pro and a pencil and uh, be much more efficient than you would be with this particular solution. So again, good as sort of a, you know, a casual use product for somebody that already has an iPad and is a retoucher, definitely not a replacement for your existing workflow. Anyways, I hope you found that uh, video useful. And if you have any advice on 
uh, using Astropad. Perhaps you've been using it for a while and you have some tips on how to make it more efficient and just in general sharing your thoughts on Astropad for retouching. Be sure to chime in in the comments below and to make sure that you get future videos like this one as well as the tutorial videos that we normally do, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel below. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.